Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Hidden Gems of Cinema. I'm your host, Jordan Ross. Now with Guillermo del Toro's latest film, The Shape of Water Hitting Theaters, I'm talking about one of his most underrated movies, The Devil's Backbone. Now for those who haven't seen it, this follows a young boy whose father was killed in the Spanish Civil War, so he's sent to an all-boys orphanage. However, once he's there, he quickly discovers that this school is haunted and holds some really dark and ominous secrets. So like most of Del Toro's films, this movie is really creepy and haunting and atmospheric. I really like how this is a ghost story set during the Spanish Civil War, which is kind of a cool metaphor for how that war has haunted Spain for decades. I wouldn't even necessarily call it a straight-up ghost story. This is more of a movie about resentment and revenge and betrayal that happens to have ghosts in it. Now, this movie is somewhat predictable, but that doesn't take away from its enjoyability. And it's still beautifully symbolic and stunning to look at. The term visionary director is tossed around way too loosely these days, but I think Del Toro is a filmmaker that deserves to be called that. This may have been one of his earliest films, but it's also one of his most beautiful. It serves as a nice primer for Pan's Labyrinth. This was Del Toro really showing what he's capable of. And I love how the ghosts in his movies aren't the bad guys. They might be scary and seem bad at first, but it's almost always a living human character that turns out to be the main antagonist. Which, to be honest, humans are capable of some pretty horrific things. We're the real monsters. It's the same thing with Crimson Peak and Pan's Labyrinth, and even The Orphanage, which Del Toro produced. I haven't seen it yet, but it looks like The Shape of Water will take that same path, featuring a misunderstood monster with an evil human as the villain. Del Toro is fantastic at exploring the absolute best and the absolute worst of what humans are capable of. Anyway, this is just a random observation I made while watching this movie, but the guy that plays Jacinto really reminded me of a Hispanic Eli Roth. Also, another thought I had while watching this movie is that the ghost in this is one of the coolest ghosts I've ever seen in a movie. And it's especially impressive considering that this was made in the early 2000s because all of the effects really hold up. If you watch a lot of movies from around that time, they look a little bit dated. But the effects in this one are just as good as a lot of effects you'll see in some modern movies. Anyway, a few fun facts before I get to my favorite moments. I mentioned Pan's Labyrinth a second ago, but Guillermo del Toro actually called this movie a sibling film to Pan's Labyrinth, with The Devil's Backbone being the masculine brother film and Pan's Labyrinth being the feminine sister film. So I thought that was a really cool way to look at it. And I think these two films would be a really interesting double feature. Also, he wrote this movie while he was in college and it took him 16 years to finally get it made. I gotta say though, it was definitely worth the wait. Anyway, for my favorite moment, this is kind of a spoiler. So if you haven't seen this movie yet, you might want to mute it or stop watching now. Anyway, when the kids come together at the end to take down Jacinto, it reminded me a lot of the classic scene in this year's It remake, when the kids teamed up to take down Pennywise. Both of these films feature children coming together and facing their fears to take down the monster that's haunted them and even killed one of their own. Anyway, this is a really good movie. Now, this is a foreign language film, obviously, so there is subtitles, but don't let that turn you off from it. I know not everyone likes to read subtitles, but like all great foreign language films, you don't even really need them. I mean, yes, it's good to read them so you know what's happening, but Del Toro is such a visual storyteller that the dialogue isn't as important as what's happening on screen. So check it out. Also go check out The Shape of Water in theaters and let me know what you think of both of them. Also, if you can think of any underrated or underseen or underappreciated films throughout history, let me know that as well, and maybe I'll do a video about that film for a future episode. Also, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on all of my social media accounts, which you can find in the description section below. Thanks again for watching this episode of Hidden Gems of Cinema. Until next time, I'm your host, Jordan Ross.